Tecumseh carburetor, uh, I already have a video up on this, but it's pretty grainy. I did it years ago. Um, so this is going to be a high-def version of essentially the same video, but I think I did it on a lawnmower instead of the snowblower, but it's virtually the same thing. So here we go. This is a 5-horsepower Tecumseh on a um, Craftsman snowblower. Loosen the top thing, the top nut, screw, bolt, two Phillips. They should come out. Sometimes these are completely missing. Pry off your choke lever and slide it off and over. And there's probably a, a thing for your keel switch. This one's bolted to it. Doesn't matter. We just fold this out of the way. Take your little screws, put them back in. It's the easiest way not to lose them. It's easiest to take this stuff off while it's still attached to the carburetor. You don't have to take this piece off. I'm going to do it just so you guys can see better. The easiest way not to lose screws is to put them back exactly where you found them. This hose right here is your primer button hooked up right here. It pushes air into the bowl and which pushes gas up into the throat of the carburetor. Um, most of the time this thing is deteriorated especially with ethanol fuel so you just pull that off and usually you can just snip off the end and reinstall it so it fits tight because it's sometimes it gummy. Um, or you have to take off the entire shroud, head bolts and everything just to get this little to put a new a whole new hose on. Kind of a pain in the butt. Let's um, pull the clamp off the hose fuel line. Now be really careful because this is plastic and can snap the um, the fuel inlet hose right here. So I just rock it, pinch it, Let's see if we can pull back. Like that, I just really pulled it off. Actually didn't crack it, but. Screwdriver. I did not crack it, but if you did, there are there are a couple methods. You can actually um, it's not a very big surface, but I've actually been able to get this hose, put a longer hose on, and got it to clamp to that. Or you can JB weld this whole thing. JB weld this fuel resistance and snap it back on. Um, this one's actually okay. I just snapped it off. Still good. It won't leak. Um, then you use a 7 16 to remove these two bolts. Another easy way to fix the carburetor is a lot of times this, um, the uh, main butterfly will actually stick in the open position. So it'll start right up, but as soon as you get off the choke, it'll rev really high and then you just usually die. So a lot of times you can free that up just by, by moving it and it'll be stiff. Just work it back and forth sometimes. And that'll free it up, and a lot of times that'll fix the carburetor, and the carburetor will run just fine. Um, now, one of the things you want to do, you notice there's a couple holes up here. You want to remember which hole this went into, so I scratch. Scratch it. A line on the hole went into. If you don't know, that's the hole it goes into. And there's also separate holes right here. I have people always asking me about the governor linkage. So there you go. There you go. That's how it is on the five horsepower to come say. And then the spring is hooked on the third one down. Maybe that'll save some questions. So we'll pull that out. And this is a pretty gummed up carburetor. Okay. Safety glasses, because you are going to get carburetor cleaner right back in your eyes. First things first, plug up the inlet outlet with your thumbs and just clean off the entire outside. This is all this green goo. Let's take off the main jet.
some companies have this, some don't. This is actually a bowl drain. You actually push that in and it drains out all the fuel, which is handy, but they are kind of prone to leak, so I try not to mess with them. Um, I've had to have those leak so bad that some, most of the time I just pull them out and I put a little piece of JB, put a little JB weld in the bottom, just plug them off. You don't have to have them. Main jet is out. On a newer style carburetor, you'll have the same thing, but it'll just look like the head of a nut. It'll just look like that. This is a newer style, and that is the same thing. It's just a fixed jet instead of adjustable jet. Set that aside. Um, pull off the bowl, gasket. I'm gonna take the gasket off. I don't want to get carburetor cleaner on this because this thing swells and it never fits back on there, so I set this aside. I'm just gonna sp spray out the inside. This one was running foul. Um, just wasn't quite running right unless it was on choke. There's a little gasket that goes on this. Sometimes it sticks to the bottom. Don't lose this. Um, a lot of times all you have to do is pull out the main jet right here. This one only has two. A lot of times there's a hole here, here, and then there's a little teeny one right above this that you can't hardly see that helps it idle. And most of the time that thing gets clogged. It's right in the thread. I can't even see it. You know, unless you're looking for it, you can't, you know it's there. There's a teeny little hole right there. Right in between where the thread stops and starts, there's a hole. So you need to make sure that's clean. Um, we'll clean the main jet. What you want to do is actually put a wrench on it. Remember where it's at. I'm going to say that it's just barely past noon and about 12 and 6. And then I'm going to screw it in. So that's half turn 1. So, so just barely over one turn, noon and 6. And with that, there's also there's a little O-ring and a, a, a brass washer. I'm going to leave that in there. And let me remember where I had this positioned. This one has a little number, uh, five or something, stamped into it, and that was at the top. So I'm going to spray through here. Oh, my o ring and brass washer are going to come out. A lot of times they stick in, you don't have to take them out. That's why this thing won't run right. Can remain. This is our, the main hole that helps suck up gas into the engine to run at all. And the secondary idle hole. I know you guys can't see this. There we go. I'm just using a piece of copper wire out of a strand. Because copper's soft, I won't enlarge in the hole. So, you could not see that hole at all. <laughs> Without knowing it's there, you would have never even seen it. So I'm just running the wire in and out. Just making sure I get all the gum off. There we go. That right there would actually make the engine, the engine would probably run brand new right now. I don't know if you guys can see that, but now I'm getting carburetor cleaner to come out of it. There we go. A nice good stream. Clean off the tip of the needle. Put the brass washer back on it. The O-ring. Install it. Put it back in my wrench how I had it. Snug. 
so I put it just a little, a little bit over half, uh, over one turn. So half, one, little past noon, past six, about one turn out, right there. I might have to adjust it from there, but that's how it was set from the factory. You should be able to even spray down through here. And to get it to come out of both those holes. Main jet's clean now. Set that aside. Let's take off the float. Pull out the pin. Take the float off with the needle attached. There's a seat down there. If it was leaking, you need to change the seat. Um, sometimes you can fix the seat. One of the tricks is to take a small uh, Phillips screwdriver and actually just put it down in there. Smaller than that. And just lightly kind of rub it just to soften up the seat. Um, the way you remove it, the easiest way to remove it is to take a machine, uh, to take a, uh, a wood screw like this. I see people trying to pick it out, it's just hard. Just take a machine screw like this, put it down in there, a couple light turns with your hand, pull it out. It looks like this. 